Welcome back to Preview TV viewers. It's Chris Nichols here, and today we're coming to you from inside my house because yes, it is that time of year. Have a look outside. That. So what are we doing on a snowy day here today? Well, we thought we'd take a look at the brand new Sigma 18 to 50 mil that's just been released for Fujifilm X-Mount. They're now making zoom lenses for Fujifilm. And we thought we'd put it up against the classic 18 to 55, 2.8 to four. Now the Sigma 18 to 50, it is actually one of our favorite lenses. Compact, affordable, sharp. In fact, we liked it so much, we gave it our best APS-C zoom lens of 2021. But the Fujifilm XF 1855, although one of their earliest lenses, right out of the gates had an excellent reputation for being like the best kit lens that money can buy. It was also affordable when you bought it with a Fujifilm camera and it just gave great results. Now today we're actually testing these lenses on the Fujifilm X-T3 and you might say, well, why aren't we using the X-T5? Well, our samples are still pre-production media samples. We're not allowed to do testing on them, but frankly, a lot of people are still using the 26 megapixel sensor and we were seeing results at 26 megapixels already as far as differences in sharpness. So if you take a look at the Sigma 18 to 50 millimeter here, the first thing you notice, it is very lightweight and very compact. I like the fact it's got a dust seal here around the back ring, but this lens is very stripped down. It's 55 millimeter filter thread. It's quite compact, but we don't have image stabilization in the lens. The manual focus ring feels very sloppy and there's no aperture ring. This is it. This is all you get. Now looking the Fuji 18 to 55. Yes, it's a little bit heavier, a little bit bulkier, but only marginally so. But you get a really nice, well dampened manual focus ring, and you also get a proper aperture ring. And this is actually very important on a lot of Fujifilm cameras. This does, of course, have an image stabilization system in the lens as well. So overall, I think the Fujifilm just gives you more features. So next we want to talk about flare, but we're not going to get it with the light outside. So we, you know, figured some stuff that we could do inside here in the house. We blasted the Aperture 300D cob light through a Fresnel lens, and that gave us a nice result here. Now, actually both lenses control flare really well. We saw that when we reviewed both lenses way back in the day, and we see almost identical results here. Basically no ghosting, only a slight loss of contrast shooting into bright light sources. Now what about LOCA? Longitudinal chromatic aberration where you get color fringing in the foreground and background out of focus areas. Very hard to remove and post. The Sigma 1850, this was actually the only downside we found with this lens. So what we did for a test was we took the drain out of my coffee maker, blasted light through that, and it gave us an interesting result here. Now, with the Sigma, you can certainly see some loca, but with the, the Fujifilm, I'm also seeing basically the same amount. So they exhibit a bit of loca. It's not terrible. It's pretty manageable. And again, I would say it's neck and neck. So next we wanted to test autofocusing speed. Now remember, we're using the Fujifilm X-T3, so we're limited by the camera's capabilities for autofocus, but what you can see here is actually both lenses respond very quickly. Now the Fujifilm does have a linear motor, the Sigma does not, but what you're seeing here is basically identical performance. Very snappy from me to the background and back to me. Perfectly acceptable for any kind of photography you want to do with these two lenses. So again, these are very similar results. Now, while we're on the topic of focusing, let's take a look at focus breathing on these two lenses. And this is where, as you focus from the closest distance to infinity, you may see the field of view change. And this is undesirable for video. You want it to basically stay as similar as possible. Well, both lenses do exhibit just a little bit of focus breathing, but again, I cannot see why I take one over another. We've got a very tight race. Is anything gonna differentiate these lenses from each other? Okay, so let's talk about sharpness next. And we'll start with the 18 millimeter focal length on the Fujifilm 1855 at 18 millimeters focused in the center. When you're shooting wide open at 2.8, I was actually very pleased with how sharp it was. And when we stopped down to f5.6, there's basically not much improvement. It really holds together. Now we take a look at the corners. The Fujifilm actually does really well when focused specifically in the upper right corner here, both wide open. And then when we stop down, it just gets better. So the Fujifilm I find actually does really good at its widest range. Now the Sigma 18 to 50 at 18 millimeters, again, very sharp at 2.8, stopping on a 5.6, not really seeing much difference. They look very similar, both lenses, but, the Sigma does have slightly softer corners. Even when you stop down from f2.8 to f5.6, it still just doesn't quite have the same sharpness and clarity that the Fujifilm lens does. But then what happens when we look at the 50 to 55 millimeter focal range? Well, again, the Fujifilm first at 55 millimeters. Now, this does not have a 2.8 aperture maximum at 55 millimeters, it is f4. So we'll take a look at that. Again, very sharp at f4 in the centers, very clean when we stop down to 5.6. Again, not much improvement. When we go to the corners though, the Fujifilm does now have a little bit of softness at the telephoto end. It does improve when we stop down to f5.6, but it is a little bit softer. 
Now looking at the Sigma at 50 millimeters, so at F4 in the center, again, we've already seen this very sharp, very clear, stopping down, it's already excellent. But where the Sigma shines is in the corners at the telephoto range, because here at F4, the corners hold up really nicely, and they only get slightly better at 5.6. So again, we have this thing where, okay, the Fuji films may be a little bit better in the corners at the wide range, but the Sigma is a little bit better in the corners at the telephoto range, and both lenses are, are fantastically sharp through the center regardless. Well, damn, I mean, how are we gonna figure this out? I mean, we really have to look then at the feature set of the two lenses when they're so similar optically. So the big thing for the Fujifilm 18 to 55 is gonna be the fact that it has built-in image stabilization. And if you are using a Fujifilm body that doesn't have any in-body in image stabilization, like the X-Pro3, for example, or some of the entry-level bodies, well, then that 1855 is probably gonna make a lot of sense. I mean, I really do like having image stabilization of some sort, but a lot of Fujifilm bodies do have in-body image stabilization, and then the Sigma would actually be a very good choice on those particular bodies. So that'll be one defining factor for you. The other thing though, of course, is going to be the maximum aperture. The Fujifilm is an F2.8 at 18 millimeters, but an F4 at 55 millimeters. And the Sigma gives you a constant 2.8 aperture all the way through. So considering also the Sigma does better at the telephoto range, right from center to corner sharpness, I would say if you plan on shooting a lot at the telephoto range, the Sigma is gonna give you that more shallow depth of field for portraits by having that F2.8 aperture, and it's gonna give you excellent quality. So what about price point? Now the Sigma 1850 is an excellent price at $550 roughly, but the Fujifilm is more expensive at $700. However, you often get that 1855 kitted when you buy a Fujifilm body. And in that case, it actually becomes a very comparable price to the Sigma. So if I was buying a brand new kit and an 1855 was available with it, I would probably go that way. If I already had the Fujifilm 18 to 55, I probably wouldn't replace it with the Sigma unless it was broken or I desperately wanted that F2.8 aperture at the telephoto range. But let's say that you never did get the 1855, you're just looking for a good general purpose zoom with a lot of light, the Sigma 1850 is great not only on Sony E-mount but now also on Fujifilm X-mount. Now the last thing I wanna say, Jordan and I both expected the Sigma 18 to 50 to clean up in these tests because we both love this lens, it's very modern, we expected it to absolutely pull ahead, but it's really a testament to this Fujifilm 18 to 55, one of their oldest standard zoom lenses that even after all this time, it holds up beautifully. Leave your comments below, let us know what you think. Hopefully this review helps you guys decide which way you wanna go. Subscribe to the channel, that'd be great. Click the notification bell, we'd appreciate that. We'll see you again soon for another episode of Deep Review TV.